Welcome to the Evergreen Thumb, your go-to podcast for up-to-date research-based horticulture and environmental stewardship knowledge to help you grow and manage your garden. Produced by Washington State University Extension Master Gardener Volunteers and brought to you by the Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State. I'm your host, Aaron Hoover, a WSU Extension Master Gardener since 2015 and a certified permaculture designer and modern homesteader. WSU Master Gardener Volunteers are university-trained community educators who have been cultivating plants, people, and communities since 1973. Are you ready to grow? Let's dig into today's episode. Welcome to episode 23 of the Evergreen Thumb. I have two guests today, Kathy Lamoureux and Debbie Bembo, who are co-chairs of the 2024 WSU Extension Master Gardener Advanced Education Conference. Kathy is a retired speech language pathologist, having worked with adults for over 30 years. She was an educator with Elder Grow for four years after retirement. She's been a WSU Extension Master Gardener since 2008. She is also the past president of the Master Gardener Foundation of Spokane County, the current vice president of the Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State and was the 2023 WSU Extension Master Gardener of the Year. She earned a Bachelor's of Arts in Child Studies and a Master's in Speech Language Pathology, and she also holds a Certificate in Horticultural Therapy. My second guest, Debbie Benbo, is a Chelan Douglas County Master Gardener volunteer, and she has been the director of two advanced education conferences in 2018 and 2023, and is currently the co-director for 2024. She uses her experience in graphic and website design for the state program and foundation, as well as for the Chelan Douglas County program. Debbie also works as part-time as a program assistant to the WSU Master Gardener State Program Leader. Debbie, Kathy, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy, why don't you start in telling us a little bit about yourself and as a Master Gardener? Uh, I'm a Master Gardener in Spokane. I have been a Master Gardener since 2008. And so I've had my fingers in a lot of pots, but for the last three years, um, I've been working pretty hard on the AEC, uh, as well as as a lot of the things that we do in our county. And I am currently the vice president of the Washington State Foundation. Okay, and Debbie, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I've been a master gardener since 2009 in Chelan, Douglas County. Um, I've been the director for, this is my third um, advanced education conference that I've directed, and I was also involved with two in between. So I've been doing it for a while. I, yeah. All right. So Debbie, why don't you start off by telling us a bit about what the advanced education conference is? Well, the WSU Extension Master Gardener Advanced Education Conference, which we refer to as AEC um, to shorten it, it's a partnership between the Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State and the WSU Extension Master Gardener Program. It's offered as an, an annual conference, and the goal is to provide communities with Extension Master gardeners who can offer research-based, scientifically reported gardening advice, taking taking that back to their communities. And Master Gardeners also have the opportunity to earn continuing education credits, which are required. So where and when will the AEC be held this year? This year's conference is going to be virtual. It's going to be held September 27th through the 28th. And we're excited to be able to offer it to a wider audience of master gardeners and to also bring it to the public, to garden enthusiasts at an affordable cost. So what are some of the benefits of a virtual conference for this year? Um, Well, for one, it's affordable. It opens it up to a wider audience. More people are able to attend. There's no cost for travel, food, or lodging. Um. Over 36 classes and learning opportunities are available with approved CE credits. And so that comes out to only $3.03 per class. No one has to miss a single class. All sessions will be recorded and made available for a limited time 
uh, once the event concludes. And this is for registered participants. We have a, uh, an inspiring keynote presentation, and people can save $30 by registering by July 1st. How is the conference structures, or how will it work as a virtual conference? Well, uh, after people register, um, they'll, they will get a, a link to the conference in September, and they'll be able to, to attend any classes they want during those days, but they'll also have that opportunity to go back and attend any classes they missed, or even if they registered and couldn't attend September 27th or 28th, they still have that opportunity to to go in and um, attend 36 classes plus the keynote, so you don't have to miss a thing. And how long do you expect the recordings to be available? They will be available for 30 days following the conference, and there will be a few days in between that that we have to wait for the production company to make them available, but then they will be available till around the 1st of November. So are there any new features or differences other than being virtual compared to previous years that are um, worth noting? We, you know, we were able to draw instructors from all over the country. So we have a, a really top-notch lineup uh, speakers. Tell us a bit about the theme for this year's conference. The official theme is gardening in a changing climate. And almost all the presentations uh, can reference changing climate, no matter what their specific topic is. Uh, it's a really strong statement. Creating sustainability and in our gardening practices has to take into account that the climate's changing around us no matter where you live. So um, it's not all um, specifically about climate change, but there's a link to climate, climate change in almost every presentation. Are there specific session tracks that, to, that you can follow if you're looking for a specific sub-theme? Yes and yes and no. I mean, you have to you have to know how to do it. We have five sessions, and each session has two live presentations and three recorded presentations. There's one session that has an extra. That's where class number thirty six comes in. But most of them are you have five choices in each time frame, and then each. Uh, topic will be listed on the schedule with its program priority symbol uh, next to it. So if you wanted to make sure you listen to all the soil health ones, or you wanted to listen to all the plant biodiversity ones or whatever, you could go through and pick. We we purposely didn't slot um, duplicates into the sessions so that there's a choice of at least five or six priorities in each session, uh, but you could you could make a choice when you're listening to the recorded sessions and going back and picking up um, others that are using the same priority. So, Kathy, tell us about the keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. I'm so super excited about the keynote speaker. I can hardly stand it. Um, her name's Rebecca McMacken, and I've been following her. I think I found her during COVID, another plus of COVID that we grasp onto, but. I listen, I've listened to her many times in uh, recorded uh, presentations and read about her. She's really well, well respected in her field. So super excited. We tried to get her last year and she was studying. She'd gone back to, to university for a year. And so she wasn't accepting a lot of speaking engagements. So we're super excited. And she calls herself an ecological horticulturist. And she uh, has a degree in landscape architecture, and she was the director of horticulture at Brooklyn Bridge Park in New York City for 11 years. And that is 85 acres of, of a, um, organic landscapes, and they were all planted and managed to support wildlife. So the birds and butterflies and and the soil, like building up the soil. And it was built on pilings that were 
placed out in the river and were no longer being used. And so they filled in and have built this garden that just sounds fascinating, although I haven't been there to see it yet. But like she says, if you can do that in the middle of New York City, you can do it anywhere. And I think that's just a fantastic message. She's right now, she's the Arboretum Curator at a place called Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx, and she cares for one of the best tree collections in New York City. She also uh, has a new garden that she's developing at the Brooklyn Museum, and uh, she recently won the 2023 Pollinator Advocacy Award from the Pollinator Partnership. So I, she just brings a wealth of information and this this eye um, for wildlife and 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 organic and and sustainable gardening and the ecological horticulture that she defines, I think, is just such an appropriate message for uh, for what we're all trying to do right now. So I think she's a person that you're not going to want to miss. I actually watched the TED talk that she gave, uh, and that's the only thing I've seen her do. But it was amazing. Yeah. I was, I, it got me really excited about hearing her yeah. speak. So it, it was like goosebumps. It was just like, oh, that's what we're gonna get. Yeah, I was really excited. So I'll put a link to that video in the show notes so people can kind of get a an introduction to to her. So tell us some more about some of the other speakers that will be there this year. Well. I actually have a list of other speakers. We have a really good mix of experts in their field, outstanding experts in their field, as well as master gardener speakers, which is always a really nice thing to be able to do is to bring people who who work their entire, you know, daily jobs their entire career sometimes in the field uh coming to give us the latest and greatest and and also the master gardeners who are very aware of what master gardeners are focusing on concentrating on and it's nice when we have experts within our re- our our reach to get these people to come and and share their knowledge so it's really nice but um some of the exciting speakers we have Nick Bond uh, speaking, and he is the Washington State climatologist, University of Washington professor, and he's speaking on uh, climate change in Washington State, past, present, and future. So he's going to really be a good person for setting the stage, for getting um, us sort of geared into thinking about what's happened before us, what are what's going on right now in our world, and what do we need to be prepared for in the future or help people be prepared for in the future that even may be beyond our lifetimes? Um, we've got uh, speakers on um, on the native on native plants. We have people that are comparing natives, cultivars and perennials, which is always a hot topic. It's really hard uh, when people are trying to go native to give up their, their favorite peony or their daylilies or whatever that that may not quite fit into that groove. And so I think it's really nice when somebody can talk about how to how to put all those things together and still um, be conscious of of protecting the wildlife, plant biodiversity. We have um, always a favorite is Mark Turner, and he is a Bellingham-based photographer and author. Uh, he has spoken at several of the AECs in the past few years. He has a new book out, and so he's and it's on weeds. Um, and I think I think that's really cool. Uh, I I heard of a one of the uh, demonstration gardens actually has a weed bed, so that people know what the weeds look like. And I, I, that's that's an incredible. I mean, how many times do you go to the plant clinic, and um, you know, and people bring you in a sample and say, "What is this? And is it a weed, or is it something I should keep?" You know, and they don't know. So Mark's going to do um, a session on weeds. And the really nice thing about him is that he always does a really good job of combining the west side and the east side um, when he speaks. 
So that's very much appreciated. We've got a couple of really good soil health speakers as well. Uh, Doug Collins, who's a WSU um, professor, and he's going to talk about soil health in urban settings um, as far as how it pertains to growing food in urban settings. And he's just gotten off of a sabbatical where he studied overseas as well as uh, locally on urban soil. So he's going to do some some comparisons. And the other person that is coming is a return speaker. If everybody um, who's listening listened to uh, James Cassidy in 2021 when we did our first virtual conference, he did a rip-roaring session on soil health that has stuck with me to this day. Um, but he has agreed to speak, and he's he's just talking about soil, what it is, and how it works. But man, can he do that? And so that part's that's going to be really interesting. Let's see. Oh, one of the other things that's going to be, uh, I think, really interesting is we're going to have a tour of a um, uh, a local native plant nursery. It's the Derby Cannon Canyon Navy Native Nursery. And they have a demonstration landscape, and they're filming a tour. And so we're going to get to see what's growing there and listen to the to the owner um, describe um, how she plants and uh, what what kind of plants really work. In addition to that, she's also giving a session on native plants. So that was going to uh, uh, be like a twofer. And that that should be really good. The last person I wanted to make sure I told you about is we have already secured our keynote speaker for next year. And his name is is Larry Weiner, and he is also an ecological um, landscape designer. And he is going to actually join us for a session. So he's going to record a session this year on just a minute, I got it written down here, so I know the exact title. Planning for the Unplanned, Integrating Ecological Restoration Techniques in Landscape Design. And so that's going to be a setup for next year's uh, keynote speaker. So that's that's pretty exciting. Uh, we do have a previous episode with Doug Collins talking about uh, soil carbon sequestration. So I can link to that too, so you can hear a little bit about him before oh, cool. the conference too. Good. So I guess the big question now is, what does it cost to attend and how do we register? So registration is open. It's early bird registration right now. So you can save $30 at $109. And then July 1st, the registration will go to the regular price of $139. And the register through uh, the website? Through the website, yes mglearns.com learns with an s all right and we will link to that in the show notes as well so everybody can find it is there anything else that you'd like to add about the advanced education conference for 2024 or 2025 we're working on sponsors it always helps to have some sponsors anybody listening um knows of a of an organization or company that aligns with our mission we'd love to hear from them or themselves and anybody's welcome it's open to the public it's not just for master gardeners so you can sign up and and listen to all the the great presentations that the master gardeners are going to listen to and it's open to to everybody anybody who where this podcast cast reaches all over the country canada any place that you're listening, it's that's the the beauty of virtual programming is that we can come right into your house no matter where you live. Will the award ceremony be open to the public? I was gonna I was gonna mention that people always you know meetings aren't the the top of our list when we go to a conference, but um, we always hold the state foundations annual meeting at the conference. And because it's virtual, the meeting itself will also be virtual. 
So that is open to master gardeners. And so the the conference will open on Friday morning with the annual meeting and the award ceremony all rolled into one. So they won't miss that part. And so there will be a separate link. It will go out to all master gardeners. Uh, and so you don't have to register to, for the conference in order to uh, attend the annual meeting or the award ceremony, which um, doesn't happen when you have a, a conference uh, in person. Then only the people that are at the conference attend those meetings. So that's that's kind of nice too. You can you can do that without registering. And then there will be a separate link that you'll have to log off, and then everybody will get the link for all the the presentations. That's the way the conference starts. Nine o'clock in the morning. On Friday morning, we'll have an annual meeting. All right. Any final thoughts about the conference? I know we're uh, still looking for a chair for the 2025 conference. If you're a master gardener and would like to be involved, we're always looking for people. Yes. And there's there's some really good ideas floating around for about format. Uh, it's pretty difficult to host an in-person conference these days for anybody, not just for Master Gardeners, but for any organization. The um, hotel costs and the transportation costs have, have really skyrocketed. Um, and so the anticipation is that 2025 will also be virtual, but we'd like to mix it up a little bit and do some regional settings as far as where you can view it. And so we're going to be reaching out to, um, hopefully, a team of uh, master gardeners throughout the state in different parts of the state that would get together as a as a team uh, to plan 2025. So if that sounds interesting, it's not something you'd have to do on your own, but let us know. And Debbie and I have been at this for a few years, and um, we'd like a break, but we're not going anywhere. So our institutional knowledge will still be available to to help people get started and make decisions. All right. Any last thoughts? No, just thanks for having us on and and register for the conference. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun. And there's gonna be a lot, a lot of information. It sounds like a lot. Is it 36 sessions? Is that correct? 30, 36 plus the keynote. Plus the keynote. Thir- 37 if you count the keynote so it's a lot of knowledge register and tell your friends yeah thank you for joining us on this episode of the evergreen thumb brought to you by the wsu extension master gardener program volunteers and sponsored by the master gardener foundation of washington state we hope that today's discussion has inspired and equipped you with valuable insights to nurture your garden the Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State is a nonprofit organization whose primary purpose is to provide unifying support and advocacy for WSU Extension Master Gardener programs throughout Washington State. To support the Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State, visit www.mastergardenerfoundation.org forward slash donate. Whether you're an experienced Master Gardener or just starting out, the WSU Extension Master Gardener program is here to support you every step of the way. WSU Extension Master Gardeners empower and sustain diverse communities with relevant, unbiased, research-based horticulture education. Reach out to your local WSU Extension office to connect with Master Gardeners and tap into a wealth of resources that can help you achieve gardening success. To learn more about the program or how to become a Master Gardener, visit mastergardener.wsu.edu forward slash get hyphen involved. If you enjoyed today's episode and want to stay connected with us, be sure to subscribe to future episodes filled with expert tips, fascinating stories, and practical advice. Don't forget to leave a review and share it with fellow gardeners to spread the joy of gardening. Questions or comments to be addressed in future episodes can be sent to hello at theevergreenthumb.org. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed by guests of this podcast are their own and do not imply endorsement by Washington State University or the Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State. Mm -hmm.